Chapter 1 Lacey Griffin smiled sweetly at the UPS man as he handed her six packages for the hotel on River's End and one for her. You've been getting a lot of shipments lately, Grant said, leaning on the counter. Do you have a secret you're not telling me? Lacey laughed. Grant's wife, Brenda, had become one of her friends in the years she'd worked for River's End Ranch. I have no secrets. I'm an open book. That's what you keep saying, Grant grinned and waved. I've got a million more deliveries today. Don't go peeking in that box before you get home now. As he left, Lacey eyed the package. She desperately wanted to dig through it, even though she knew exactly what was in it. Faux leather for the diaper bag she was going to attempt to make. Her cutting machine would cut it out, and then she'd simply have to sew it together. She'd made some other things, but this would be her biggest task yet, and she couldn't wait to get started. Thankfully, it was Friday, so she had two days off to play with her crafts, before she had to be back at work on Monday. She loved her job, but not nearly as much as she loved crafting. Lacey had always been a solitary girl, enjoying her own company more than she liked a crowded bar. She went to the restaurant for trivia night every week, but only because she enjoyed trivia so much. Other than that, she stayed in her little cabin there on the ranch doing whatever she wanted to do. She was itching to go to Hobby Lobby for more ideas, but not quite yet. Maybe next weekend. The ding of the elevator had her looking up from her loving stare at the box of craft supplies. An older woman and her middle-aged daughter were approaching, the mother in a wheelchair. The daughter was tall and looked as if she had to hunch over to push her mother. Lacey couldn't begin to imagine how much that would hurt the daughter's back. How are you today? Lacey asked sweetly. Can I help you find anything? The pair had just checked in the day before, and Lacey knew they hadn't had time to get the lay of the land yet. The daughter smiled, nodded. I want to know where Kelsey's cave is. A friend of mine was here a few months ago, and she raved about the food and the girl who runs the place. Lacey grinned, nodding. You leave through the front door, and then it's about a quarter of a mile, to the left. The daughter frowned. Lacey could tell it was going to hurt her to push her mother that far. Let me see if I can find someone to help with the wheelchair. As she reached for the phone, a man she hadn't noticed before, though with as handsome as he was, she wasn't sure how she'd missed him, stepped forward. I can help out, he said, his voice colored by an Irish lilt that Lacey couldn't help but love. I'm going to the cafe for lunch anyway. Oh, could you? The daughter, Karen, asked. I'd be happy to. The man smiled at Lacey, and she felt like her knees lost the ability to support her. Virginia frowned. Karen doesn't need help. She likes pushing my wheelchair. To Lacey, Virginia seemed like a sweet lady to everyone but her daughter. She wasn't certain how Karen had turned into her mother's whipping boy, whipping girl? Whatever. It just didn't seem right to Lacey, whichever it was. Well, I couldn't live with myself if I didn't help out a sweet lady like your daughter. He looked at Lacey. I haven't checked in yet. If you could make sure my room is ready for me, my name is Colm O'Reilly. I'll make certain everything is ready for you then. It was too early to check in, but Lacey didn't mind. She could make an exception for a man who went out of his way to help random strangers. There would be a few rooms ready already anyway. Thank you. Colm put his hands on the hand grips on the back of the wheelchair. You should really open that package as well. If a woman looked at me like you were looking at that mysterious box, I'd know I'd met the woman I should spend the rest of my life with. Lacey felt her face turning flame red as she looked down at her computer, typing in the name. Colm O'Reilly. He was definitely Irish. By the time her shift was over, Lacey was exhausted, as always. Fridays were always busy days for check-ins. As she picked up her box, still unopened, she headed toward the front door of the hotel, excited to start her weekend of crafting. 
She wasn't sure if she should nap so she could work more that day, or if she should just get to it. The door of the hotel opened for her, and she smiled at Colm. What are your plans for this evening? she asked. It was her job to be friendly, and if the man needed a place to go, she was happy to point him in the right direction. He shrugged. I thought I'd get some food from the cafe again, and then spend some time in my room. Have you taken time to hike up onto the mountain yet? Or to take a four-wheeler? Go horseback riding? Do a little ziplining? The ranch offers everything you might want to do. I'm here alone. None of those activities really appeal if I'm going by myself. He rubbed the back of his neck. Oh, I see. I recently lost my wife, and she was my companion for those things. Shauna had been his companion in only that one way. Ten years of a loveless marriage had taken a toll on him, and he was honestly ready to start anew. He would, however, miss having someone to go ziplining and mountain climbing with. I'm so sorry. I'm not. Thank you, he said, knowing what was expected of him. I could, Lacey said. I could spend some time hiking and ziplining this weekend if you'd like. She didn't think any other man would be able to tear her away from her weekend of crafting she had planned, but Colm was, while well, he made her insights melt, and she wanted to get to know him better. Besides, he wouldn't want to be around her every minute, and she could still whip up a diaper bag for Grant's wife, Brenda. Are you certain? It's not your job to spend your time off with the guests. I'm certain. How about I treat you to supper tonight then? I really like the café. Oh, the café is closed in the evenings and on Sundays. We could either eat at the restaurant here on the ranch or we could go into Riston and find something there. Which would you prefer? Is the restaurant good? She nodded. It's exceptional. Let's eat there then. Colm seemed to be perking up right before her eyes. Sounds good. Let me take my package back to my cabin, and change into something a little more casual, and I'll meet you back here in thirty minutes. Jeans acceptable? he asked. Lacey smiled. Jeans are perfect. I'll be wearing jeans, and a t-shirt, probably. All right. I look forward to it. Colm stood in the doorway of the hotel watching Lacey leave thrilled that she was taking her duties on the ranch so seriously that she was willing to spend her time off with him. He wasn't looking forward to spending all his time alone now that Shauna was gone, not that she'd been much of a wife. Thirty minutes later, they met in the entryway of the hotel, and his eyes traveled up and down Lacey. She was wearing a pair of jeans and a t-shirt that read, I'd rather be crafting. He smiled, nodding at her shirt. What kind of crafts do you do? A little bit of everything. I made this shirt for example. I just got some faux leather today, and I'm going to try my hand at making a diaper bag for a friend who's about to have a baby. I've never done anything quite so adventurous, but I'm excited about it. You don't have to spend time with me then. It sounds like you really would rather be crafting. Lacey laughed softly. Usually but I need to breathe some fresh air and do some fun stuff. I live in the most beautiful state, surrounded by nature. I need to remember to leave my cabin and get outside sometimes. If you're sure, he couldn't imagine anyone being willing to give up their free time to zip line with him, but he wasn't about to complain. I'm positive. We're going to need to make an appoint for when we want to zip line. I prefer taking four-wheelers as far as we can up the mountain, and then we can hike from there. I'll pack a picnic. Lacey realized she would have no time at all to craft that weekend, but he was only there for a week, according to his reservations. Brenda wasn't due for another month, and her shower was in two weeks. Easy enough to go ahead and play with Colm this weekend, and she could make the diaper bag in the evenings, or even the next weekend. He stopped just short of the restaurant. I don't even know your name. It's Lacey. And you're Colm. Thanks for telling me my name. 
I'd forgotten for a minute there as I got lost in your blue eyes. She laughed. I have a feeling a man like you would never remember to get lost in my eyes. Why would you say that? He asked. She shrugged. You're way too sexy for me. Out of my league, big time. He stared at her in shock for a moment. You really believe that? He'd been a little more confident before he'd married, but after ten years with Shauna, he had no self-esteem left. The woman had torn him apart in more ways than one. Of course, I do. Have you never looked in a mirror? It was hard to believe a man could be so unaware of how he affected women. He simply shook his head. All right. Let's get some food. He couldn't keep talking to her about this. She was obviously just trying to make him feel better about traveling alone. Once they were seated, he asked, What's good here? Everything, she said. I like the bacon cheeseburger best, but the Monte Cristo is amazing, and so are the different pizzas. I haven't eaten anything on the menu that wasn't amazing. Well, I haven't tried the tofu burger to be honest, because it sounds disgusting, but everything else has been wonderful. He laughed. I'm far from vegan. I'll try the bacon cheeseburger then. Good choice. Lacey folded her menu and put it on one edge of the table. So, tell me about yourself. What do you do? I'm a pharmacist. I'm between jobs right now. I've been working in Texas, where I lived with Shauna, but I'm on my way to Mountain Home, Montana, which is as amazing as it sounds. I bought a pharmacy there, and I'm going into business for myself. No more working for Walmart and dealing with crazy people. She smiled. Anytime you work with people, you'll deal with crazy people. I'm just hoping that I no longer see people who dress like the people of Walmart running around. Maybe people will understand that prescriptions must be paid for, and if you don't have good insurance, you have to pay for your own. Maybe. Tell me about that beautiful accent of yours. He laughed. I'm from Northern Ireland. I moved to the States shortly after becoming a pharmacist. I was in an online relationship with Shauna and moved here with a marriage visa. I had just officially become a citizen when she died. What happened? Lacey asked, worried that she was prying. Colm told her what he told everyone else. She was out late one night and wrapped her car around a tree on the way home. On the way home from her lesbian lover's house, where they'd been drinking. He'd just found out about the lover a few weeks before and was getting up the nerve to file for divorce when she died. He thanked God every day there were no children involved. That must have been hard. I cannot imagine waking up to find out someone I love has died. Enough about me. Tell me about you. Obviously, you work for the ranch. And you craft. Talk to me about crafting. She smiled. Well, I've always been a big reader, but I started feeling like I wasn't being productive with my time, which bothered me. My mother sent me a cricket for Christmas and I didn't even know what it was when it arrived. I think I've figured it out though. My whole world is now full of crafts. I've even opened an Etsy shop, simply because my little cabin has no room for me and for the stuff I make. What's your favorite thing to make? He asked. Oh, I'm happy to make anything if it means I get to sit and play with it all. I've made pillows, and hot pads, and signs, and, well, I can't list it all. It's kind of ridiculous. But I'm having so much fun with it, I just can't seem to stop myself. He smiled. I think that's wonderful. And you zip line in your spare time? Lacey shook her head. No, but I should. There's no point in living in such a beautiful place and never going outside except to go to work and to shop. Probably true. Do you think we'll be able to get in for ziplining tomorrow? We should be able to. And if not tomorrow, then Sunday. Most of the time they've got some openings, but with spring in the air, people are ready to be outdoors more, so, I'll call in the morning to schedule it. 
She took a sip of her water. If we can't do that tomorrow, I'll get us a couple of the four-wheelers, and we'll go exploring. Kelsey, who runs the cafe, is convinced Bigfoot lives here. So, we have to take a camera and look for Bigfoot. Her brothers tease her about it and leave little clues for her. I've heard they've even dressed up as Bigfoot, but that was before my time here. How long have you been here then? Since the fall of 2018, so three and a half years? I love it here. Where were you before? I grew up in Chicago. I hated being in such a big city though, so moving here was the best thing I'd ever done. My parents don't think so, but I do. I'm sure they miss you. They do. And I miss them. But I'm happy here in Idaho, and I need them to understand that. How can you be happy without a craft store close, he asked, his eyes sparkling with laughter. Because I have a friend called Amazon, who works with my other friend UPS to bring me all the best craft supplies right to my door. Sounds like a friendship made in heaven. Oh, yes. Definitely. Chapter 2 Lacey met Colm in front of the hotel the following morning, ready to go up onto the mountain on four-wheelers. She was wearing her hiking boots, which would hopefully be enough. The snow was melting, and the ground would be muddy. Spending her day off doing something other than crafting would be new, but she was thrilled to have a little time with Colm. He seemed like a genuinely good person, and there weren't enough of those around. Colm smiled at her. Where do we go for the four-wheelers? I'll show you, Lacey said, heading in the direction of the stable, where the four-wheelers were parked. You must feel really lucky to live in a place like this, he said. She shrugged. Sure. I mean, I love it here. I don't get outside as much as I should though. Were you happy with your package when you looked at it? She laughed. I haven't yet. I'm not going to open it until I have time to work on the materials in it. Hopefully soon. He stopped walking. Are you sure you don't want to stay in and craft today? You're not obligated to do this. I'm sure. I wouldn't have offered if I didn't want to do it. I promise. I really don't want to put you out, he said. Colm couldn't imagine a woman choosing to spend time with him over doing something else she enjoyed. It seemed very far-fetched to him. Shauna had certainly never been willing to give up a moment of her free time for him. He'd even been expected to do all the cooking and cleaning after being at work for 12-hour days. You're not putting me out at all. I get to have fun playing outside today. It's something I should do more. Besides, what woman in her right mind wouldn't want to spend the day with you? Just listening to him talk was enough to make a woman weak in the knees. I can think of a lot of women who wouldn't want to spend a day with me. His late wife, for example. They're insane. I'm not. See? Now that mystery has been solved. She put her hand on his arm. Come on. Let's go. He started walking again, happy with her hand on his arm. I couldn't help but notice the cooler you're carrying. Did you really make lunch? She laughed. I was going to, but I decided to have Bob make it instead. Bob? He's the chef at Kelsey's Cave. Seriously, I think he's a genius, and he's always willing to make special picnics for people. That sounds good. Do you cook? he asked. She nodded. I do. Not as well as Bob, of course, but I tend to cook most meals for myself. I do enjoy cooking. Well, you'll have to cook for me sometime this week. You have no idea how long it's been since I've had a home-cooked meal I didn't cook for myself. Lacey's mind zipped through the next week. He'd be there through Sunday of the following weekend according to his reservations. Friday night maybe? She could easily start something in the crockpot and then she could cook the sides when she got home from work. That sounds good to me. Colm was surprised to see how readily she agreed to cook for him. She wasn't much like Shauna. 
Of course, Shauna hadn't been like Shauna when they'd first met. He never should have married someone he met online. He knew it worked sometimes, but it hadn't worked for him. After they had checked out the four-wheelers, Lacey led the way across the ranch and up the trail that led up the mountain. When she stopped about halfway up, he stopped beside her, removing his helmet. Everything okay? She nodded. There are some broken twigs here, see? Could be Bigfoot, but I don't think so. He looked at the spot she'd indicated. Probably just a deer or something. Looks too small to be Bigfoot. Are you a believer? she asked. The question seemed to come out of nowhere. A believer? In Christ? She laughed. No, that's too personal a question for someone I met yesterday. Are you a believer in Bigfoot? Colm grinned, nodding. I don't know. I believe in Nessie, of course. But I'm not sure about Bigfoot. Let's just say I want to believe. So, you're living a Mulder-esque life. Fun. X-Files fan, he asked. Is there a point in living if you're not, she retorted, starting her four-wheeler back up the mountain. They traveled for a while longer, him following close behind, and finally she pulled over at a picnic area. He hadn't expected to see something like that this far up the mountain, but he guessed it made sense. Surely there were other tourists who had ventured up there as well. Are we eating here? he asked. She nodded. Yup. This is my favorite picnic spot on the ranch. There are some nice ones down near the hotel, but this one is private. I mean, anyone can come by, but it happens very rarely. I know the other employees come here, but none have invaded my space so to speak. It's beautiful, he said, moving to where he could see down the mountain and onto the ranch. It was still a good way up to the peak, but they could do that on foot, if they decided to do it at all. She nodded. Okay, getting this picnic set up and we'll have a tasty lunch. She opened the cooler and pulled out the tablecloth Bob always provided. It was red and white gingham, and it felt like a picnic should. Then she pulled out the food. Fried chicken in a separate bag that was still hot. A flask full of what looked like a flavored lemonade. Deville eggs. Potato salad. And brownies with cream cheese frosting. She'd recognize those brownies anywhere. They were a product of the bakery on the ranch, run by Bob's wife, Miranda. There were also two paper plates and plastic forks and spoons. Red solo cups, which made her want to sing the song, but she didn't know Colm well enough to start that torture yet. Lunch is ready, she called out to Colm, who was still staring out over the ranch. I'm going to miss being here, he said softly. The views are amazing. I'm sure Mountain Home is beautiful too, though. Oh, of course it is but you won't be in Mountain Home. Colm hadn't realized just how attached to her he was getting until the words slipped out of his mouth. He wanted her to go with him, but he'd already had one disastrous marriage. He didn't exactly need another. Lacey smiled. I have a feeling there are no ranches turned into resorts that are hiring in your Mountain Home. I'll be checking on that first thing when I arrive. She laughed. You do that. He glanced down at the food for the first time and smiled broadly. This looks delicious. Bob's a miracle worker. She sat down and took some food to fill her plate with. His devilled eggs are better than any I've ever tried. They sound delicious. He reached and took a chicken thigh and two deviled eggs before scooping some of the potato salad onto his plate. No dessert? he asked, mostly joking. Oh, of course, there's dessert. Bob's wife is the baker here on the ranch, and she included my favorite dessert. Brownies with cream cheese frosting. I called Bob at home last night to get him to make the picnic, and Miranda threw them in. She's an amazing friend. Wow. I cannot wait for dessert. Although. Yes? Colm grinned at her. I'm on vacation. 
Shouldn't I eat dessert first? Lacey laughed. You eat your meal in whatever order you want, but make sure to leave two of the brownies for me. Oh, I'll be good. But just this once. It was hard to believe how easy it was to be around Lacey. Women had always made him tongue-tied, but not her. How odd. They talked while they ate, mostly about little things. He told her some of the ideas he had for his pharmacy. I think I want to rent out part of the place for crafters. I think I could help people in the community out while making them loyal to my business. Loyalty is big in a small town. There's only my pharmacy and the grocery store pharmacy in town. I'm really hoping that the customers who are already loyal to the man selling the place to me will remain loyal to the business. We'll see. It sounds like you're looking forward to living there. I am. I can't wait to be part of the community. I've only met a few people in town so far, and I'm excited to see what happens next. You never can tell. Lacey smiled and nodded. It really does sound like an amazing place. I mean, I absolutely love the ranch and Riston, but, but she wasn't looking forward to him leaving, which was a surprise. Shouldn't she be excited to have more time for crafting again? I understand. He finished his last bite of potato salad and reached for a brownie, putting it onto a napkin to eat off. You've really made this sound like the most decadent pleasure a man could try. I'm going to be rating this brownie you know. It'll hold up, she said, reaching for a brownie. Trust me. His first bite told him that she wasn't exaggerating about the brownie one little bit. It was that good. He sighed dramatically. The baker is married? Cuz, if not, I'm proposing. Lacey laughed. I know. Yes, she's married to the man who made the fried chicken. Well, I can't break up that happy couple, now, can I? I need them both to feed me. I do not want either of them unhappy, she agreed. I don't eat in the cafe often, but when I do, I'm expecting a good meal and not some slop. After they'd finished eating, she piled all the food left into the cooler and carried their trash to the can set aside for that purpose. Do you feel like hiking? he asked. I'm up for whatever. I have my backpack, so I can hike, or we can just ride around for a while. What are your supper plans for tonight? he asked. Is it too much to ask you to include me? She smiled. I have some chili going in my crock pot. There's easily enough for two. She'd planned to take some for lunch on Monday and Tuesday, but it wouldn't kill her to make something else. You wouldn't mind? Colm asked. Not at all. She found herself wanting to spend as much time with him as possible. The two of them spent a few hours riding around on the four-wheelers after he declared he was too full to walk much, and then they headed back down to have supper at her place. After dropping off the four-wheelers, he said, I want to change out of these clothes. There's too much mud on me. Do you mind waiting? Or can you give me directions to your place? She nodded, smiling. I'm in cabin number 22. There are signs, and you just follow them. She pointed in the general direction of her cabin. You have to go past the place with all the gnomes out front, or you've missed it. Gnomes? Trust me. You can't miss it. He shrugged. I'll see you in about 30 minutes then. Sounds good to me. She headed toward her cabin, wanting to get changed herself. They'd splashed through a lot of mud that day, and both needed to get cleaned up. When she walked in, the smell from the chili hit her like a ton of bricks. She put the leftovers from lunch into her fridge and jumped in the shower. She made it quick, but it felt good to no longer be covered in mud. It had even seeped through her jeans. Yuck. She was dressed and getting out crackers and cheese for the chili when there was a knock on her door. She hurried to open it. Hey you. Hello. Colm stepped inside, his eyes taking in the craft supplies spread everywhere. 
you must really love your crafts, he said. She'd told him she did, but he really had to see it to believe it. Oh, I do. I took my sewing machine off the table, so we can eat there, though. He chuckled. That was probably a wise idea. He looked at her chilly curiously. I spent years in Texas, so I'm curious about what your chili tastes like. I've had more than my share of chili over the years I've been in this country. She smiled. You must miss Ireland. I do. Sometimes. I was there until I finished what you would refer to as high school, and then I went to university in England. Am I allowed to tell you I love your accent? Lacey asked. It makes me weak in the knees. He smiled. Well, I may have to take advantage of that. He winked at her, and she found herself blushing. She was twenty-six years old. Why was she blushing? She filled two bowls with chili and carried them to the table where she'd already set out napkins, spoons, crackers, and cheese. I hope you like it. She used a simple recipe that her mother had used, and she absolutely loved her chili. He looked around at the table. No Fritos? Everyone in Texas serves their chili with Fritos. I don't have any. I hope you like it anyway. Oh, I don't like it with Fritos. Just wasn't sure why you weren't serving them. Good choice. Lacey laughed. You are a silly man. He reached out and took her hand. I think you make me silly. Lacey wasn't sure what to say to that, so she dipped her spoon into her chili and took a bite before reaching out to add cheese. She always liked to taste it first, to make sure she put in an adequate amount of the cheese to deal with however much spice it had. She cooked much like her mother did, which meant little measuring was done, and sometimes it was too hot for her taste. It's wonderful, he said after taking a bite. He crumbled up crackers into it and added cheese, just as she did. If I wasn't here, what would you be doing tonight? She shrugged. I'd probably be opening the box I received yesterday and cutting out the diaper bag I have in mind for my friend. If you want to do that, I won't stop you. No, we should spend time together. We can watch a movie or something. He frowned at that. He wanted her to have fun, even though he was around. I have a game I've been playing on my phone. Why don't I play while you do your crafting? She bit her lip, feeling torn. She really did want to craft, but she didn't want him to feel like she was ignoring him. If you really don't mind. I don't mind one bit. Chapter 3 After supper, during which Lacey realized she'd completely lost her heart to the man with the sexy accent, she quickly loaded the dishwasher, and then they settled in the living room where she could craft, and Colm could easily play his phone game while they chatted. She had a small desk where her laptop and Cricut shared space, and she set up the design file for the diaper bag before she opened the box. The full leather was thick, and she knew it was exactly what she was looking for when it came to making the bag for Brenda's little boy. The color was a beige, and would match whatever Brenda wore, though Lacey had a feeling her friend wouldn't be quite so fashion-conscious with a newborn. She cut off a portion of leather from the roll and did a quick test cut before she started the big cut for the bag. As soon as it was going, she moved to the couch to sit with Colm, so they could hear each other over the machine. I meant to ask you when I got here, I saw the house with the gnomes, and there was a woman walking a rabbit in front of the house. She told me to come in for snickerdoodles. Lacey couldn't help but smile. Over her years on the ranch, there had been so many stories about Jacqueline and her eccentricities, but Lacey didn't know the woman well. She was glad Colm had met her. Did you go in? I told her I was meeting you for supper, and I didn't have time. What did she say to that? She told me to come over Monday afternoon while you were at work, and we'd have a nice pot of tea and snickerdoodles. Lacey nodded. Are you going? I don't know. You should. I've heard a lot about Jacqueline and her snickerdoodles, but I've never once been invited in. 
I see her all the time, and she just waves as I pass by. Well, that's odd. I think so too, but it's okay. The stories about her are cool. Do it. He considered for a moment, before nodding. I guess I can meet her for tea. I'll be working anyway. How did she know that I was spending time with you? He asked. I don't know how she knows any of the things she does. She just seems to know things. Maybe the bunnies and gnomes are secretly her spies. And the fairies? From what I understand, the fairies are constantly fighting with the gnomes, so they wouldn't be on the same team as the others. You never can tell though. She sounds like she's off her rocker. You'll have to tell me what you think after tea on Monday. Would it be all right if I grabbed lunch for us both from the cafe and brought it to the hotel for us to share? He asked. I think I want to spend as much time with you while you're here as I can. Lacey couldn't help but cheer inside her head. This man, he was something else. She wanted to spend every minute with him and force him to stay. I'd like that. Okay, it's a date then. Are we dating, Colm? She had thought she was just entertaining him while he was on the ranch. Did he have feelings for her as well? Oh, trust me, we are. And my heart is getting involved much faster than it should be, I'm afraid. Why does that scare you? He sighed. I spent ten years in a loveless marriage. I don't want to go through anything like that again. She was surprised to hear him say that. She'd thought he missed his wife from the little he'd said about her, why did you stay? Every time I talked about leaving there was another reason she told me I needed to stay. Her cat, who was also her best friend was dying. She was having trouble at work. Colm shook his head. There were so many reasons to stay, but only one reason to go. I was planning on filing for divorce on Monday morning, and she had her wreck on Friday night. He opened his mouth to tell her about Shauna and her lover, but he didn't want her to think less of him. It was making him crazy thinking about how his wife had been having an affair with another woman while they were married. He wanted to let go of all the memories of Shauna and move on, but it just wasn't happening yet. I'm sorry it wasn't a good marriage. I'm not in any kind of hurry, she told him, fibbing. As she was falling for him, she wanted them to move quickly but it obviously wasn't the right thing for him. Thanks. He turned to her fully, putting his phone on the arm of the couch. I really think the two of us are a good fit, but I promised my mother I'd never rush into another relationship. Well, and I promised myself as well. I completely understand. He looked deeply into her eyes, his gray eyes filled with so many different emotions. Now that we've talked about moving slowly, may I kiss you? Lacey took a deep breath and nodded. She'd never had a real relationship. A few dates here and there, but she'd ended everything as soon as she knew the man wasn't right for her. And she always knew that quickly. Cole moved slowly, dipping his head and kissing her softly. She tilted her head to one side and moved just a smidge closer to him. Feelings rushed over Lacey in waves. He was the man for her. She could feel it deep down inside. Down to her toes even. Her hands moved to his shoulders and rested there. Colm lifted his head after a long moment, staring into her eyes. I don't know what just happened there, but I want it to happen forever. Lacey stared back at him, not sure what to say. Finally, she said, my machine stopped so I need to get another cut set up. Colm looked stunned for a moment by her reply, but then a slow smile spread across his face. Do you say that to all the men? Um, Lacey was embarrassed by her reaction to him, so she got up and went to her laptop, setting up the cut for the next piece of leather. She didn't look at him as she watched the machine cut for a moment. She took the leather that had already been cut over to the couch with her, and pushed it from the leftover faux leather, which would go in her scrap pile. She was good about using her scraps. Colm watched her for a moment, wondering what to say to get her to talk to him again. Why not use real leather, he asked. 
She shrugged. Faux leather is cheaper, and until I really know what I'm doing, I don't want to mess with real leather. That makes lots of sense. That's coming apart perfectly. Yeah, I've had to work with the cut settings a lot when working with this stuff. I feel like I've messed up gobs and good less of faux leather. Gobs and good less? My grandmother had a lot of odd sayings that didn't make sense, but I like that one. Sort of. He grinned. My gran was the same. Odd old sayings, but they were certainly colorful. Oh, did I tell you I made reservations to zipline tomorrow afternoon around two? No, but I'm thrilled. I haven't been ziplining in a year or two. Well, then it's time we go, isn't it? It had been even longer for her, but she didn't want to admit it. Her first year on the ranch, she'd done every outdoor activity offered, but she'd slowly become more and more of a homebody. They kept everything casual for the rest of the evening, and he stood to leave shortly before ten. Come to church with me in the morning. There's a small, restored church right here on property in the Old West Town. Pastor Kevin is cool, and his wife is a mess and a half, but she's fun to be around. What time? Colm asked. It had been a long while since he'd been to church, but he'd gone to Catholic schools growing up in Ireland. 10. Bridget, the pastor's wife, says no one should get up earlier than that on their vacation or any other time. Getting up before 9 in the morning should be outlawed. He chuckled. Sounds like I'm going to like Bridget. We all do. We just don't tell her because it might go to her head. Colm threw his head back and laughed. I like you, Lacey. I like you right back. When he leaned down and kissed her goodnight, he kept it brief and disappeared out the door. Lacey stood for a moment, leaning against the door, wondering what kind of mess she was getting herself into. He seemed like a wonderful man, but she wasn't so sure he was ready for the kind of relationship she had in mind with him. It would be hard to see him go in a week. So, she'd live in the moment, and when her heart broke at the end of his time there, she'd have only herself to blame. Asterisk. Colm rose early and had a solitary breakfast, watching the happy people around him on their vacations. There was a couple that was obviously on their honeymoon, and he couldn't help but wonder if their marriage would truly last until one of them died, as it said in the marriage vows, or if one of them would cheat on the other. He hated that he'd become so cynical during his marriage, but he couldn't figure out how else to be. After breakfast, he dressed for church as best he could. He'd only brought a pair of khakis and a polo, but no suits. Hopefully, no one would look down on him for his lack of dress clothes. Of course, he'd never have been able to guess that he'd meet a girl on his vacation who would invite him to church. Lacey was something special. He knew he didn't deserve someone quite so kind. He saw Lacey walking into the old west town and joined her, walking the rest of the distance beside her. You have a good night? She asked. He nodded emphatically. It was filled with sweet dreams of a certain beautiful, blue-eyed girl I met this week. Oh? Are you telling me you're two-timing me with someone else? She grinned at him and he shook his head. I would never cheat on anyone. To me, that's the absolute worst thing someone could do to another. Lacey's heart sank. Shauna must have cheated on him. I agree. He looked at her, and he could see she meant every word, and he couldn't help but smile a bit. I should have met you ten years ago. Um, ten years ago, I was sixteen, and worried more about my SAT scores than anything else. He chuckled. I can understand that very well. You're right. Ten years ago was not the right time for us. But maybe now is. Maybe, Lacey really wasn't going to jump into anything with him. He needed time to heal from his bad marriage. Even if he hadn't come right out and told her his wife had cheated, there was no doubt in her mind that the woman had. Hopefully he'd tell her everything soon. They reached the church, 
and she introduced Colm to Pastor Kevin while Bridget stood beside her husband yawning. I hate mornings, Bridget said casually. You know there's no law against having a church service on Sunday afternoons. Tell him that, Bridget said, elbowing Kevin. Kevin shook his head. She needs to get used to getting up in the mornings. She'll survive. I'm sure, Lacey said, smiling at the two. They seemed so mismatched, but they were obviously in love. Where are your kiddos? Kaya is keeping them this weekend. They're doing a big cousin thing, so I can sleep a little more. Are you sick? Bridget shook her head, her hand resting on her stomach. Just expecting. Oh, that's wonderful. Bridget grinned. I certainly think so. We had such a hard time getting pregnant with the first, and now it's three in four years. Not sure how I'm going to deal with one more, so I'm glad my sister is close. You two are blessed to have each other, Lacey said. Bridget wrinkled her nose. Sometimes. Lacey laughed, heading into the church and choosing a seat toward the middle. She would have preferred to sit way in the back, but Pastor Kevin reserved the back four stragglers. The service only lasted an hour and was quick and to the point. As always. The message was about kindness, and Kevin said the same phrase several times during it. Always be kinder than you feel. Lacey was all about kindness, but hearing it put that way really made her think. It was easy to be kind when you felt well, or you wanted to do something. But what about the people who hadn't treated you right to begin with? Those were the people who were hard to be kind to. And she sometimes failed at that, as everyone did. But was she truly showing the love of Christ if she couldn't be kind to those people? She didn't know if she could answer that. As they walked out of the church, Colm smiled at her. That wasn't too bad. Lacey laughed. I love Pastor Kevin's sermons. He always makes me think, and he never threatens us with fire and brimstone. I like the gentle messages he has, and he's never afraid to mention his own failings. It makes for a pleasant morning at church. I actually enjoyed it. I can't remember ever enjoying a sermon. Pastor Kevin is the best. Chapter 4 They had a quick lunch at the restaurant. Lacey had eaten out more that week than she had in ages. She simply preferred to cook for herself and not be at the mercy of whatever anyone else put into their food. I'm fixing you supper tomorrow night, Lacey told Colm halfway through the meal. They'd chosen to split a pizza, and though the food was good, she just wanted to cook for him. I'm not going to turn down a home-cooked meal. Colm took a bite of the pizza they were sharing. I was hoping you'd be willing to spend the evenings with me this week. Absolutely. And I'll have lunches with you as well if you'd like. It would be more work for her to make his lunch as well as her own, but she didn't care. She felt as if they were on borrowed time already with the days of his visit counting down. Sure. I plan to get something from the cafe tomorrow, and I can do that every day this week. Lacey shook her head. I don't mind one or two days, but I really do prefer to cook my own meals. I'm buying. It's not that. I just prefer to cook for myself. Then I know what's in my food. Do you have food allergies? he asked. No, but I did as a kid so I keep track of what I put in everything in case they start to get bad again. Makes sense to me. Do you take anything for allergies? She smiled. Is the pharmacist in you coming out? He shrugged sheepishly. I always wonder about people. I guess it's a hazard of the job. I'm excited that you get to run your own pharmacy. I bet you'll be really good at it. I'm sure going to try to be. I'm keeping on the old pharmacist's staff, to begin with. That's a good idea. It will help you to start fitting in with the community. Moving into a small town is harder than you'd think. How's that? he asked. She shrugged. Everyone is friendly, but they're also wary of you. 
like they aren't sure why you'd choose their town to move into, and some think you must have nefarious plans. He laughed. I don't think Mountain Home is like that. I've been told every small town is like that. Just be ready. She took a sip of her water. How was it moving to Texas? Well, I moved to Lubbock, which isn't quite a small town anymore, at a quarter of a million people. I built work friendships right away. Shauna didn't really like to be with other people together, so it was hard to make couple friends. She preferred to go out with her work friends and left me to go out with mine if I wanted to do something with other people. You two didn't go out together? Lacey asked. His marriage sounded miserable to her. When we were first married, we'd have Friday nights as date nights. After six months, we didn't even do that. We'd do take out often, and she'd disappear into a room she'd set up for herself, and I'd end up gaming. We didn't even watch the same television shows. She told me we did when we were in our long-distance relationship, but after we married, it was as if we were strangers living under the same roof. And that was until she cheated and made everything worse. Wow. I can't believe you stayed as long as you did. He gave a self-deprecating laugh. I didn't think I deserved any better. Still don't. Karen and her mother came into the restaurant then, and Lacey raised a hand in a wave. Karen parked her mother at a table and then came over to talk to them for a moment. What are you two up to today? Karen looked exhausted to Lacey, and she wished she knew how to help the other woman. Colm smiled at the older woman. We're going ziplining. You should join us. Karen laughed. Sure. Mom would have a conniption fit if I left her alone to have fun. She's already yelling at me for sleeping her vacation away. She hid a yawn behind her hand. That's sad. It's your vacation as well, isn't it? Lacey asked. Karen nodded. Yeah, it was supposed to be a time of regeneration for me, but I didn't know how bad mom's dementia was. No one told me, and I live across the country from her. Soon I'll go home to all my obligations, and mom will go back to my stepdad, but, I sure won't feel better after this vacation. I just can't make her happy. Karen looked over her shoulder in her mother's direction as if she was afraid her mother would hear her. I'm sorry this hasn't been easier for you, Lacey said. Why don't the two of you join us for trivia night on Thursday? Karen bit her lip for a moment. Sure. Mom may not like it, but at least she can't complain I won't do anything fun with her. Lacey smiled. That sounds good to me. We'll meet you there. After Karen had gone back to her mother who seemed to be scolding her for something or other, Colm asked, Trivia night? I guess I should have asked you, Lacey said. This week is Harry Potter trivia. Every week there's a trivia night, and occasionally, there's a themed night. I go every week. I guess I should join you then. He grinned at her. I should have asked if you were willing instead of expecting it. Really, you don't have to go. I can go with Karen and her mom. She usually just joined whatever team was short on people. There was a maximum of six people per team, but a lot of times, there would be teams of two, and it was fun to get to know new people that way. No way. I'm going to be there. It sounds like fun. Do you know anything about Harry Potter? He asked. I've read each of the books at least ten times, and I have seen all the movies almost that many times. You? He grinned. Same. We're going to make a good team. We sure are. After lunch, they wandered around the old west town, and Lacey led Colm into the soda shop. He was surprised to see the thriving business it did, even on a Sunday. They each got an ice cream cone they ate as they walked around, looking at everything. Lacey was able to point out some of her favorite buildings and shops. The Old West Town was her favorite part of the ranch. At two, they were waiting for their turn at the ziplining. Colm was excited, but when he looked at Lacey, she seemed to be nervous. 
You like ziplining, don't you? He asked, worried she felt as if he was pressuring her into going with him. She shrugged. I do once I'm going. But waiting to be strapped in and thinking about flying is a bit nauseating, don't you think? He laughed. Not for me. I'm an adrenaline junkie, I think. I'd invite you to go white water rafting, but it's too cold this time of year. Perhaps I can come back in the summer. Or you can come to Mountain Home for a bit. The Royal River runs through town, but I'm not certain if there's any white water. Well, you find out. I'll go there, or you can come here. I don't know how far away we are, but Montana isn't terribly far from Idaho, so I hope we can see each other. It seemed like a pipe dream though. He was skittish about relationships, and that was plain as day. He wouldn't really want to see her after he was gone. Out of sight meant out of mind and all that. I hope so too. He wanted to kick himself for a moment as he thought about entering another long-distance relationship, but he had to remind himself that Lacey was as different as Shauna as night and day. Even in the very beginning of their relationship, Shauna had been extremely demanding. Lacey didn't seem to have an ornery bone in her body. Of course, what did you really see of someone while you were first dating them? Lacey could see that Colm was conflicted, so she didn't say anything for a moment, instead waiting on him to work through his feelings. With the marriage he'd been in, she could tell that life was going to be hard for a while. He hadn't spoken yet when it was their turn to go. There were dual zip lines, so they could go parallel to one another. As soon as she was strapped in tightly, Lacey started to get excited. She waited as Colm's harness was checked, and then they went flying over the ranch. The view of the mountains and the river was beautiful as they soared through the air. When they were on the ground, Lacey was laughing, having enjoyed herself far more than one would have expected with as nervous as she'd been. Colm grinned at her, his dilemma obviously solved for the moment. I just wish we'd made appointments to do it more than once. Oh, we did. He gaped at her for a moment. We did? She nodded. Once is never enough after I get started. Just twice? Yeah, then we'll go back to my place, and we'll have the stew I've had in the crockpot all day. You do love your slow cooker, don't you? Colm asked. Lacey nodded. I would never be able to trade it for an instant pot, no matter what anyone says. I love my crock pot and I'll use it until the cows come home. Stew sounds good. I'm in the mood for a good Irish stew, but I have a feeling you won't be making that. She shook her head. Just a boring beef stew. I'll look up a recipe for an Irish stew and we'll do that later in the week. How about I get my mum's recipe for you? Sounds good to me. I'd be happy to make something your mother has made for you. She wanted to ask if Shauna had prepared his mother's recipes for him, but she had a feeling she already knew the answer. On their way to her cabin later, they were both still feeling a bit euphoric from the ziplining, and they were laughing and joking. When they reached the house Jacqueline shared with Simon, Jacqueline smiled at them both. I'll need to see you for snickerdoodles and tea one day this week as well, she said to Lacey. Lacey frowned. I work every day. Then I'll bring tea to you. On Tuesday. We'll have it at the front desk. Jacqueline then turned to the gnome that seemed to guard her fenced-in yard. What is it, Bob? She listened for a moment. Bob said you'll make fine babies. Off with you both. She waved her hand, dismissing them. As they walked away, Colm seemed at a loss for words. What was that about? he asked. It's just Jacqueline, Lacey told him. It's practically normal behavior for her. That's odd. That's Jacqueline. I've heard all these stories about how she has a hand in every romance on the ranch, going so far as to tell people they're with the wrong person and they need to wait. I've even heard of some couples not being willing to go forward with a relationship without her approval. She says the fairies tell her what to do. Colm swallowed hard. 
He was Irish, so of course he embraced the idea of leprechauns and fairies. But, could it be possible that Jacqueline knew something they didn't? He wasn't ready for marriage again. Shauna hadn't been gone for long enough, and he, well, he wasn't sure he could be in a normal relationship after he'd lived with her for so long. Perhaps, but it would be hard. Lacey opened her door and went inside, going immediately into the kitchen. She was hungry, and the stew smelled fabulous. Maybe it would be almost as good as his mother's stew. She hoped it would anyway. She put some biscuits in the oven, Pillsbury for speed, and she set the timer. Colm stayed in the living room with his thoughts while she worked on supper, but she found she didn't mind a bit. It was nice to share her cooking with someone else. Colm felt like an idiot for even starting a relationship so soon with someone else, but Lacey was special. If he waited a year, would another man come along and sweep her off her feet? She was special in a way he'd never seen in a woman, and though he wanted to take her into his arms and beg her to marry him, he knew he wasn't ready for anything like that. He only hoped she understood why he had to move so slowly. The stew smells delicious, he said softly. I hope you enjoy it. Make sure to get me your mother's recipe, and I'll make Irish stew for you on Saturday evening. That way I have all day to work on it. That sounds positively brilliant. He walked to the table and sat at the spot where she had a bowl of stew and two biscuits waiting for him. Thanks for being willing to try to make something special for me. No problem. I'm all about trying new things and stretching my cooking muscles. It's strange how much I've always enjoyed cooking, and how little I've cooked for anyone but myself. Well, I'm willing to eat your cooking any day, but I'm also willing to take you out to supper if you'd like. I'd rather cook if you don't mind. If I end up working late one night, maybe I'll take you up on it. He smiled. Well, you're going to eat Bob's cooking tomorrow, right? That's the cook's name at the cafe? It is. Yeah, I'll eat his cooking tomorrow. Just get me whatever the special is. Bob always has great specials, and I love them. Sounds easy enough. He dipped his spoon into the stew and smiled. This is really good. Thank you. Sorry, I didn't have time to make biscuits, and we have to eat Pillsbury. Do you usually make biscuits from scratch? Lacey shrugged. I go either way. Usually I make them from scratch, but if there's no time, I don't have a problem making Pillsbury. Then don't worry about what you've made for me. I'm happy not to have to cook. Did you cook a lot when you were married? She asked. Only when I wanted to eat. Lacey shook her head. Shauna had to have at least one good quality. She worked hard and was good at her job, he said without hesitation. She was good at many things, and she had good qualities. She just didn't like to show them to me. She told me once she didn't want to spoil me. But she expected you to spoil her? That's right. He shrugged. I don't mind cooking now and again. I'm just not sure about doing it every night. I worked more than my share of 12 and 14 hour days, and she never worked more than 8. What did she do? Lacey asked. She was a nurse, but she never was willing to work a minute past her shift. Her co-workers knew it too. Everyone else would work around her. Huh. I wish I knew how that worked. After supper, Colm insisted on doing the dishes. You start sewing on that bag. Do you have to hand sew? Or will you use a machine? I'm going to hand sew this one. There's a certain look I have in my head that can only be accomplished by hand. When is your friend's baby due? He asked. Not for another month. I want the bag finished for her baby shower in two weeks, but I have time. Well, so while I wash the dishes. It's only fair since you cooked. Thank you. She was surprised he was so willing to help, but she wasn't at the same time. He had certainly jumped at the chance to help Karen with her mother. Perhaps he was just the type of person to do for others. 
If so, she heartily approved. He once again played games on his phone while she worked on the diaper bag. They chatted as they went about their separate tasks. They found their taste in music was different, but they liked the same television shows and movies. They spent a lot of time laughing over the different shows they liked, and there were several she'd seen he hadn't, and he'd seen she hadn't. Maybe tomorrow night, we should start a TV series together, she said. And we can't watch ahead. We can only watch when we're together. I think that's a brilliant idea, he said, getting to his feet. I'll see you for lunch tomorrow. His kiss was soft and gentle. Good night, Lacey. Good night, Colm. As she watched him jog toward the main hotel, she thought how hard it was going to be when he left. For her, this wasn't just a holiday romance. He was the love of her life. Chapter 5 Colm came to the hotel at noon, just as Lacey's lunch break started, and she took him back to the break room. Danny was there, eating her lunch off to one corner of the room, and she nodded when Lacey walked in. Introduce me to your friend, she said. Danny wasn't usually super friendly, but Lacey obliged. This is Colm. He's here for a week before moving to a new town and taking over a business he just purchased. Colm, this is Danny. She's one of the Weston siblings who run the ranch together. You're bringing a guest into the employee break room? Danny asked. Um, I guess we can go eat in his room. It's okay. I just need you to let me know next time. Sometimes I have lunch meetings in here as you know. Yes, of course. I plan on eating with Lacey every day this week. Is that good notice? Danny nodding, laughing. Perfect. If I have a lunch meeting, I'll eat in my office. I don't want to put you out, Lacey said. Danny was one of the bosses on the ranch, though Wade was her direct superior. You won't be. Now that I have notice, I'll do what I need to do to accommodate you. Bob had supplied dirty rice and Cajun fried shrimp for lunch. Being from Louisiana, he liked to throw twists into the menu on occasion, and most of them were Cajun or Creole. Lacey was always happy to eat whatever he'd made. As they ate, dipping their shrimp into what Bob called angry sauce, they talked. Any idea what to expect from my visit with Jacqueline this afternoon? Danny looked over. You're having tea with Jacqueline? Snickerdoodles? Colm nodded. Is that bad? Danny laughed. It's good. It means she sees a future for the two of you. Jacqueline is an amazing matchmaker, especially for those who don't particularly want to be matched up with someone. She has a knack for meddling, just the right amount. Colm looked at Lacey. Would she be offended if I didn't show up? She'd just hunt you down and take her cookies and tea with her, Danny said. You'll live through it. Lacey shrugged at him. I told you, I've never been one of her targets before, but I've heard a lot of things about the way she handles these situations. I'm almost afraid to go to tea with this woman, Colm said. Danny shrugged. Don't be. I lived through it. All my siblings lived through it. Heck, my parents even lived through it. Jacqueline is a bit eccentric, but she loves to help people, and you're it. She's coming here for tea with me tomorrow, Lacey said. Danny nodded. I bet she'll spread it out across the front desk, like it's a picnic. Wade has told her over and over not to mess with the employees during work hours, but she just doesn't listen. We're kind of used to it. Don't worry you'll get in trouble, Lacey. Jacqueline has a mind of her own and does what she wants. The rest of us just do as we're told. Colm looked at Danny. Why do you all let her get away with doing whatever she wants? No one lets Jacqueline do anything, Lacey said. She's a force to be reckoned with around here. Neither of you are making me feel better about this. Maybe we should change the subject. Danny crumpled up her trash from lunch and strode to the door, turning and winking at Colm. I promise you're going to live through it. 
and with that, she was gone. Lacey grinned at the look on Colm's face. It really is going to be okay. Now that I know I won't get in trouble for her invading the front desk, I'm kind of excited about it. Really? You want to meet with her? I do. She's just a sweet old lady. What could go wrong? Oh, I hate it when people say that. It means the heavens will open up and swallow me as soon as I step foot in her house. There's a good chance of it. At two, Colm found himself being ushered into Jacqueline's backyard, where he was invited to sit at a small table. It was a little chilly for a picnic, but Jacqueline didn't seem to mind. All around him were gnomes and fairies and bunnies jumping in between. Don't mind the rabbits. I'm doing my best to get them all neutered, but it seems as soon as I've accomplished it, there are two dozen more bunnies living in my yard. I do love bunnies, don't get me wrong, but the good doctors Weldon tell me we're overpopulated, and the bunnies are overfed, and soon the ranch will be overrun with them, so I do my part. Colm wasn't certain how to respond to that, so he gave a noncommittal, hmm. Do you know why you're here, young man? Jacqueline asked, changing the subject so quickly, he was a bit confused for a moment. To eat snickerdoodles, he asked. Are you being snarky? I don't stand for snark at my tea table. No, ma'am. Well, let me tell you why you're here. She poured them each a cup of tea, not asking how he liked his, but adding one lump of sugar and a bit of milk, just as he would have done. Handing him his cup, she pushed a plate of snickerdoodles toward him. I know you've had a raw deal with love so far, and I also know that you need to open your heart up. Your soulmate is right here on this ranch and she's already half in love with you. Stop worrying about that twitch you were married to before and get down on one knee and beg her to marry you. I. Oh, please. You know exactly who I mean, and you know what I say is true. You're going to leave here, and her heart is going to break into a million pieces. She doesn't deserve that. She's a good girl. Colm bit into a cookie. I don't want to hurt her, but I don't think I'm ready for a new relationship. Did she tell you it was okay to take it slow? He nodded. She did. She lied. You need to grab the bull by the horns and tell her you love her before you leave this ranch. Do you hear me, boy? Jacqueline was very intense as she told him exactly what he needed to do. The strange thing was, what Jacqueline thought he needed to do was something he wanted to do. But he couldn't trust his heart. I'm not sure my heart can be trusted in matters like this. If you can't trust your heart in matters of the heart, then what do you think you should trust? Your liver? No one should trust a liver for anything, boy. Do you know what the purpose of a liver is? Yes, ma'am. I'm a pharmacist. I know a good deal about the human body. Now you're giving me lip. Listen to your heart. If you don't, you'll make two people very unhappy. I just don't think I should get into a relationship again so soon. You're wrong. Jacqueline drank the last of her tea and stood up. Don't make a mess of things. That girl deserves better. She slipped into the house and shut the door behind her leaving Colm sitting in the middle of a patch of gnomes with a bunny sitting on his foot. Jacqueline certainly had tamed her pets. As he walked back toward the hotel, Colm couldn't help but wonder if Jacqueline could possibly be right. He shook his head. She couldn't be. No, he needed to go at a snail's pace to keep from hurting them both. There was no way around it. At supper that evening, Lacey questioned him about his tea time with Jacqueline. Was she as crazy as you thought she'd be? Even crazier, Colm said. He didn't dare tell Lacey what Jacqueline had said. He wasn't going to take the old woman's advice, orders, because he knew she was wrong. No matter how many people had told him Jacqueline was always right about matters of the heart. Well, I look forward to tea with her tomorrow then. After supper, they sat together, watching the show they decided to binge-watch together, while Lacey kept sewing on Brenda's baby shower gift. 
It was a good thing Colm was leaving Sunday, because she still had to make the last of the arrangements for the shower. When Colm didn't kiss her as he left that night, Lacey couldn't help but wonder if he had decided he wasn't really interested in her. Maybe he simply wanted to be friends, which is what they were. But there was so much more on her side. She reached for her phone and saw it was only 9.30, so she immediately called Brenda, telling her all about Colm. The thing is, his wife just died, and even though his marriage was terrible, he needs time. Jacqueline thinks we need to get together, but I don't think he's going to listen to her. Lacey pulled her legs up and wrapped one arm around them. I don't know if I should cut ties or agree to a long-distance relationship, or if he even wants a relationship at all. I'm so confused. Brenda sighed. I don't know what to tell you. I haven't even met the guy yet. When do I get to meet him? You know I need to approve of him before you can marry. I don't know. Do you guys want to come to my place for supper tomorrow? I'm cooking, and he'll be here. Yes. We will be there. I'll be the one waddling around and looking like a weeble. Do you remember weebles? My mom had some for me from her childhood, and you really couldn't knock them over. I have a feeling you could knock me over with a feather. Brenda sighed. I'm not sure I can take another month of this. Just keep remembering that the longer he cooks, the healthier he's going to be. Brenda groaned. He's already cooked forever. Do you realize I've been pregnant for five years? Lacey laughed. Just be glad you're not an elephant. No, I just look like one. Stop it. You're beautiful, and you know it. I can't wait to hold that baby in my arms. You're not the only one. I'm just not looking forward to getting him from where he is now out into the world we live in. What if I forget to breathe? Lacey laughed. You always make me feel better. You're not supposed to feel better. You're supposed to tell me the whole world isn't ending just because this baby is stuck inside me and won't come out until he's already potty trained. The whole world isn't ending, and I think in a few years, you'll wish he had come out potty trained. Don't you think? Where does this Colm guy live? Brenda asked unexpectedly. Oh, I thought we were off the subject of Colm. He's been living in Lubbock, Texas, and he's moving to Mountain Home, Montana, to run a pharmacy he just purchased. How far is that? Brenda asked. You're going to move away, and I'll never see you again. Who is going to tell me I'm being a good mom when I know I'm not? I haven't been asked to move anywhere, and I do know how to use a telephone, so if I do move somewhere, then I can call you and tell you anything you need to hear. Will you feed me tacos and tell me I'm pretty? Lacey grinned. I'll make tacos tomorrow night, and you know I always think you're pretty. You're just saying that because I'm hormonal and you're afraid to set me off. Though there was a little bit of truth to what Brenda said, Lacey denied it. Not true at all. Sure. Brenda sighed. I need to go to bed. I'm sleeping for six, you know. You multiply everything in your pregnancy. You've been pregnant five years. The baby will come out potty trained. You're sleeping for six. You need to remember basic math and just keep going. Party pooper. No, that'll be the baby. What time tomorrow night? Brenda asked, getting serious. Six. Don't be late. I'm never late. Brenda said. Good night, Lace. Good night. Lacey hit the end button and then wandered into the bathroom. A nice hot bath was just what she needed to feel better about life. A nice hot bath and an even hotter romance novel. Sometimes she read books that were literary and good, but when she needed to escape reality by jumping into the pages of a book. Romance was it. She chose one of her favorite books and took it into the bathroom. Keeping her mind off Colm seemed like a great idea. Hopefully she could stay focused on the book and not be depressed about life. Hopefully. Tomorrow was a new day, 
and perhaps, if she was good, Colm would ask her to marry him, and they could settle in Mountain Home and have a dozen babies.